guys of uh, to to uh, I don't know how you guys do it because <laughs> uh, the the amount of like taking care of this and that and the lighting and the 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 the, the, the sound and then oh the mix is not correct. Holy shit, man! Like I was just trying to position this stupid camera. <laughs> God damn. You are tuning in to the Cigar Guys podcast, where aficionados and newcomers alike gather to explore the vast cigar universe. Meet your host, Alexander Gonzalez, Mark Nikolai, his big little brother, Zachary Nikolai, and Jared Burroughs. So sit back, light up, and let's get the conversation started. Thank you guys for tuning into another episode of the Cigar Guys podcast. We are back here in the studio once again with, of course, Mark Nikolai. How are we doing? And we've got Jared Burroughs as well. How are you? I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Thank you. And we've got Zach Nikolai as well. I'm doing well. <laughs> He's present. I didn't ask, but no. it's okay. Uh, we have a special guest in the studio. Well, not in the studio, virtually today. Uh, and we're smoking some cigars from uh, the brand. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Right now, we're smoking uh, the Arlequin. And we're going to get more into uh, detail about these cigars and a bunch of other stuff that uh, is coming from this company. But let me go ahead and introduce... The special guest, we have Omar from Fratello Cigars. How you doing, brother? What's up, guys? What's up? Excited to be here. Excited to uh, smoke a cigar and uh, and uh, chit-chat uh, the night away. <laughs> Absolutely. We're excited to have you as well. Um, we're going to go ahead and kick it off uh, and tell us a little bit about this cigar that we are smoking tonight. Well, what is everybody smoking? Everybody smoking the oh, same yeah, thing? Oh, yeah, we're smoking the same yep. thing, the Arlequin, yep. the Connecticut. Okay, all right. So I'm smoking the same thing, actually. I'm, uh, I'm smoking the Arlequin Connecticut as well. So this is probably the, um, the, one of the, one of the best experiences I've had working on a cigar because I, I knew in my heart what I loved about the Fratello Arlequin. I, I, to me, that cigar is, is just incredible. Pure in a story. I just, I love that blend. I love the complexity. I love the, the flavor. It's not something that's going to like be, you know, overly sweet or overly uh, peppery or anything like that. It's just a very well balanced cigar, right? So, um, it, it has been one of my very, very strong seller and uh, blends that I have in my company. And so, when I started the uh, the uh, the search for the Arlequin Connecticut, I ended up having to uh, to look at this in a various you know variety of ways, right? Because I wanted to create something very unique on a prensado on a box press cigar, and I wanted to see how that kind of like would evolve. Long story short, I told the factory, let's work let's work on these ten different blends. But one of those blends, I don't want you to tell me which one it is, and all, all I want to do is just grab the Arlequin blend. And change the wrapper. So I want you to do nothing else. First time I've ever done that, where I've actually just swapped the wrap the wrapper on a cigar and just uh, launched it. And um, after six eight months of testing and trying and writing and and reviewing and all these different things, I ended up uh, uh, making a selection. And the selection was by far uh, by leaps and bounds the Fratello Arlequin uh just with the uh wrapper so for me that was that was a beautiful thing to see because i've done that before with other things and see how that works i did it with the auto one time i did it with uh with the with the classical one time and it just doesn't work like that but with the fratello arlequin and just changing that wrapper it was a thing of beauty so pretty yeah. happy the way it came out jared and i we i think we we're smoking these last night actually after having like three cigars prior we were drinking some coffee and stuff like that and jared you know, said to me, dude, this cigar is, you know, it's a Connecticut, but it's still got a lot of great flavor. So and I'm really flavor. enjoying it. You know, after all the cigars I smoked before, like some Maduros and stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, it's a really good cigar. I've been enjoying it for sure. Thank you. Absolutely. So now let's go back a little bit. Let's talk a bit about how you got into the cigar industry and how you ultimately uh, got to where you're at right now. 
Yeah. Um, so I had a little bit of a crazy story. I, uh, I was a NASA, um, I was an ana- a NASA analyst for about 12 years before I got into the cigar industry. I, I was finishing up my MBA at the University of Puerto Rico in Mayagüez and, uh, NASA had a big corporate recruitment of, um, uh, you know, efforts where they were trying to hire, you know, uh, some talent and, uh, and get somebody, but they only had two positions, right? And, there was over 400 plus applicants applicants for this uh, two positions. One of them was in Cape Canaveral uh, as, a, as a software engineer, and the other one was in uh, Washington D.C. Uh, as a management and program analyst. And uh, I ended up uh, being selected after you know a few interviews and a few things. Um, NASA doesn't have that many uh, civil servants or employees. Like you know, they have about 17, 18 thousand, but they have about 55 thousand workforce of contractors that uh, that work for us. And so, uh, they gave me the opportunity. I came into DC like around 26 years old. I started, uh, I, I started rising through the ranks of the federal government. And, uh, my last position, I was able to, uh, by the time I was 30 years old, I was able to get, uh, a, a GS 15 position, which is the scale of the federal government. It just basically goes, you know, from GS one to the GS 15 as the highest level of responsibility. And so, uh, I got to be, a, uh, by the time I was 30, um, you know, the director of the budget execution for the science mission director at the NASA headquarters. And so, um, you know, after three years into that job, I was, I don't know, lie, I was bored out of my mind. I needed, I needed another challenge. I'm always, uh, I'm always challenging myself to do different things and to grow and to, uh, and so what I ended up doing was, I want to try and see if I can find something that I can do in, in terms of entrepreneurial, uh, with my entrepreneurial skills. I wanted to see if I could do something that, um, really matches with what, with my, with, with my desires. And so, uh, I love, uh, I love alcohol, but alcohol is, uh, is a little bit of a hard, uh, uh, not to crack, especially if you need a lot of cash and mm-hmm. I love cigars. For sure. And so, uh, the cigars was, uh, was something that I started out of Washington DC area, just selling in the DMV, uh, Maryland, Virginia, selling in Delaware here and there, cause it's my local market. And all of a sudden, man, we started getting phone calls from people in like California, Texas, Oklahoma, and all these different places. And I thought it was very strange because although we had gone to the trade show to open up some market and all that stuff, I wasn't looking to, you know, I had a great job. I was making you know, almost $200,000 a year. I was having a good, time just selling cigars on the side i was looking i was enjoying uh what i was doing but then they started the brand started to uh to 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 gain a lot of traction and one of those uh areas that we ended up uh uh expanding was obviously we went national at that point over over a year and a half in by the bear in mind i still was at nasa this whole time and then about another year and a half in about we're talking about almost probably four years since i started the brand the brand had already grown to over at that point, where it was like 350 retailers in the U.S., and we had a few, about four or five countries carrying Fratello at that time, and I was like, "Shit, I mean, I got a business in here. Maybe I'll uh, do this full time." And this is all true, man. I, I, it was, it was based on the fact that uh, the brand had grown so much outside of the DMV because there's so many travelers coming in and out of Washington D.C., so many contractors, people that try brands, and all of a sudden they go back and they put my angle band and my angle cigars in their uh, uh, humidor and their shelves or whatever. And they drop off a band and they call me back and say, Hey, I'd like to carry your cigars. And that honestly was the, uh, a very organic way of uh, Fratello growing. And right now I can say that after I left NASA in 2016, uh, we are now in about a thousand retailers in the U S we have um, a nine phenomenal brands that, are doing uh, a, a tremendous job on the road. And we also have uh, 32 countries now carrying our brand. So it's been a great journey, uh, but definitely one where, you know, you kind of benefit a lot of luck here and there. So no, that's insane. And uh, I guess that explains the NASA inspired series that you guys have. Yeah, man, you got to have something that connects, right? Yeah. So uh, I ended up putting the, um, uh, you know, the lunar, which is, uh, you know, you guys, I'm not sure if you guys saw the story on that, but, you know, we became the first cigar company ever to land on the moon. And a lot of people always ask me, like, what the hell is that, man? It's like, well, it has to do for my background, clearly. Uh, this is this good friend of mine. Uh, we launched a brand together. It was meant for 
a celebration for him and his uh, and his uh, team for launching the first uh, lunar capsule that has ever landed in the moon since you know in 52 years. And so he hits me up. He just wants to do something really just to connect with the skies. And uh, and 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 I told him I'm going to launch this as a official brand. And he was like, he loved the brand and he loved the cigar so much that he agreed to put my logo on the actual capsule that uh, ended up going to the moon. So, nice. you know, I'm not sure who's going to be the best selling cigar in the, uh, in the next 2.2 billion years, bro. But I can <laughs> tell you that if there's an alien out there, my man, they're smoking your boy. cigar. <laughs> exactly. By right any chance here. did he like put any cigars on there? Yeah, yeah. No, no, oh, no, 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 no. We ended up putting the logo uh, um, uh, on this first uh, this first launch. So we got a couple other things time. that we're talking about. You got to bear in mind, man. Every 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 single nut and bolt that goes into that spacecraft is you know weighted, uh, uh, analyzed, uh, and 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 ways of improving because the idea is that you take as many payloads and as many things that you can. Um, to try uh, different experiments in the surface of the moon or Mars or wherever it is that you're going. So, hmm. you know, it's pretty cool stuff, man. Yeah, we do have an aerospace engineer in the studio right now, so I'm sure he can uh, yeah. appreciate everything you're talking about right now. Where's he at? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Zach here is an aerospace engineer. I am. Uh, AKA, I guess, a rocket scientist, as he calls himself. <laughs> I do call myself it. that. Yeah. So I, 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 think it. It, I think it just rolls off the tongue better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would agree. But yeah, I mean, what what did you say? Twelve years in NASA? That's a pretty uh pretty long time. You're what, thirty two? Shit, man. I love I love it. I love it though. I've been trying to make myself feel better at the last uh of the time that I had to drop off my eighteen year old daughter in oh, wow. college. Uh dude, it was it was rough, man. I you know, there was a meme the other day too that I saw that was kind of like kind of messed with my head, and it's exactly what ended up happening. It was like looking at all the parents there that was dropping all their people off, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm definitely younger than all these fucking people for <laughs> sure. I am 100 percent look better than all of them too. And then all of a sudden, two days later, I swear to God, Meta or some of these people are just <laughs> listening with me, man, was literally saying, you know. When you go to drop off your daughter and immediately you think you're the only one that's young as everybody else. <laughs> Dude, I was, that messed me up, man. I can't. So, no, I'm 45, man. I'm 45. Oh, no. I mean, yeah. Good looking guy for 45. You, I thought you were at least in your 30s or something. Appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to tell my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> does your daughter think you're like the cool dad or does she uh, hate your guts? I, I made sure to point it out. I made sure to point it out. I told her multiple times, like, look around here. <laughs> look around here. To point out one that looks better than me. And then she was like, yeah. you're too much. You're, you're embarrassing me. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> clearly. That's exactly what she said. That's funny. <laughs> so we're going to jump. Like oh, guy. go ahead, Zach. Sorry. Well, no, I was just going to go back to the space thing. You know, you might have a logo on the moon. We got to get a cigar on Mars when Elon Musk sends us. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll have you back on. Then we'll be. <laughs> That's a whole different ballgame right there, man. We'll be, we'll be taking appointments at that time. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah man. No, I love, I love everything that's happening with, uh, with the, with the space race and the space industry. Um, I, I, I miss it too. I miss the, I miss the fact that, that stuff that NASA did, man, nobody else was doing in the whole world. You know what I mean? And that's, that's important. I mean, the budget I, that I was managing is a $5.2 billion budget. Um, this whole budget was basically something that accounted for almost 10% of all the science done in the entire world. I mean, think about that. Think about the impact of a noble agency, which is what NASA is, right? When in comparison to the other federal agencies, like the, the, the state, the, you know, the Department of the Defense and, you know, uh, uh, the Army, all these different things, uh, NASA has a very noble mission, right? Where uh, with uh, $18 billion, we have the ability to pull some really good stuff together. So, man, I'm so how, this, how much of that money did you use to make the studio to fake the moon landing. <laughs> I was just, I'm joking. This is the rocket science. <laughs> what the hell is happening here, man? Like, who are you bringing into this group? I thought he was a rocket scientist. It's a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> clearly, clearly. Uh, that did not happen. You can tell us after the podcast. <laughs> I, will, I will say there are a lot of people in the DOD 
uh, that do think the Earth is flat and we've never went to the moon. Oh, in the DoD, really? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it's a big Lockheed Martin thing. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> don't listen to any of these people, okay? Don't listen to any of these people. These people are not. Oh, I don't. I don't. But <laughs> that's why you don't work for Lockheed. <laughs> I was just thinking, man, you work at Lockheed too. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening here? You believe in this shit? Like, who do we have here? Who do we have here in this I, studio? I, no, people? I love. I, I love when like I don't know. It gets brought up if I'm at like a bar or something. I'm like, yeah, I'm an aerospace engineer and. They start talking about, you know, the earth being flat and the moon landing being fake. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, explain it to me. And they just start explaining it. And then the moment I start asking questions, it's over for them. Because <laughs> I'm like, yeah. well, how does that make any sense if you do this, this, and this? I remember when the argument used to be, well, I could, I could point my camera to the sky and not see stars and this and that. And I'm like, what? Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. They were like trying to compare. By telescope. <laughs> their ca- yeah. Yeah. I can't take it, man. After like five, after like five minutes of a conversation, you know how many times I've had that conversation. Every single time you say it, man, you work at NASA, everybody wants to know about the aliens and about this and that. And but it's even more like right now, it's like way different because I, you know, NASA w- w- is in my past. It was 2016 when I left, and I started it was there for 12 years. But all of that time when I was in the agency, and you give them somebody your card, and it has like the big NASA logo, everybody's like, oh my god. This guy, you don't even know if I'm like, you know, cleaning the the downstairs in the concourse level (laughs) and making sure that everything is in in its right location and everything. Or if I'm like an accountant or a rocket scientist, nobody really cares. They just scares. Like, oh my God, you You know, it's, it's funny you say that because I got a, uh, back when I was in college, um, I got an interview to work in NASA. So I'm here. I'm thinking this is going to be like my first engineering internship, you know, this and that. So call to the interview. I'm asking them about it, this and that. And they finally get to the end and they're like, yeah, well, uh, basically it's a three week internship and we're going to give you a car and you have to drive around the campus and make sure none of the street signs need to be changed. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, I want a NASA internship. I don't want this one though. <laughs> They're like, can you can you do it? Uh, and I almost did it, just just to say, you <laughs> that's know, the NASA effect. <laughs> I almost did it just to say I had an internship from NASA. Yeah. I would have put I would have put zero details on my resume. I would have just put yeah. internship from NASA, whatever. But I had something to do. I had a wedding to go to that weekend, so I could, I had to skip it. So I mean, you a three you week internship. Say, you you could always say things in such a a, a fine fine terms. Just like, hey, man, you know what you do? What do you? You could be the cleaner. You could be a. You could be a gen- janitor. All you have to do is say, hey, man, I am in the cleaning department, the clean room, NASA headquarters, concourse C. All of a sudden, nobody yeah. cares. It's like, what? <laughs> you're, you're, you're in the clean sanitation. room, yeah. the sanitation at NASA director. headquarters, and concourse C. That's a. That's yeah. yeah, like yeah, uh, you know, sanitation so, engineer. You know? Exactly. <laughs> you just put engineer after anything. No, see, you, like, yeah, no, you put director of sanitation. You know, of like uh, uh, rocket, you know, areas, right? And then they'll be like, "Oh shoot, this guy's the one that's making sure everything's sanitized before it goes to space." <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Like, that's it. It's like nah, all you gotta do. I wipe down the counters. <laughs> well, God forbid it's not sanitized before. It goes up into the sky that's true actually that's a big you got to be careful about that because uh you don't want to bring germs from here mm, you know to the aliens on mars right yeah, yeah I, well, gotcha. I, well, I mean yeah. we've already we've already brought so much stuff and you know like it's, <laughs> it's already yeah. so polluted you know <laughs> yeah. with the amount of people and the amount of things that we've taken up there but i mean who, who cares at this point maybe we we, we did uh there's uh, some microorganisms that have started since uh since we went to the moon. That's for our great grandkids to figure out. Well, well that, that's what's <laughs> going to happen. Because they're going to say, oh, there's life on Mars or on the moon. Mm. And meanwhile, it's just life that we brought. <laughs> you know, over exactly. There. We already know we brought microorganisms. <laughs> yeah. Just don't know what the hell they're doing. Yeah. But I do know what that NASA lo- the Fratello logo is doing. It's just shining bright. Okay? <laughs> shining bright. So waiting for these, uh, you know, alien people to come around and just... Uh, you know, take us to the next uh, galaxy. Do you think this is how Elon Musk felt when he sent his Tesla to just roam around Earth? Probably. 100%. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> just sits there like, yeah, look at that thing shining. The leisure. He just needs he just needs a cigar to enjoy. That's the only problem. He doesn't smoke. That's true, yeah. 
<laughs> Do you think you guys are going to be able to send it another one to the second moon that's going to come and enter our orbit? Uh, I mean, I, well, how how long is it going to be? Is it going to be? I think it's going to be like two weeks or something yeah, like that. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't care. We don't, we don't care about that stupid moon. It's going to be gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's a side moon, side moon. Thing, yeah. you know? <laughs> it's a side. It's a side. It's like side B, side moon is a robin. It's like a little robin. It's a little yes. Sorry, it comes in quick and goes Batman. faster. <laughs> <laughs> man, this is gonna be an interesting day, huh? Yeah. I mean, I should have a drink for this, man. This you have to you're hang go. out with the cigar guys. <laughs> you're gonna need a few. Exactly. Okay, so I guess we'll. Uh, uh well actually so real quick since we're talking about the nasa line how many different cigars are in this line so we have the uh, naveta uh which is stands for shuttle in italian because i was uh involved in about six special missions to support analysts and uh and helping around and this guy's uh, uh naveta is very special to me because i always call it the cigar that if my daughter ever gets married that's the one that's going to go to the wedding. Okay. So just pay attention to that. She's only 18, like I said, but hopefully he doesn't make that as mistakes and marries way past 30 and they will be even <laughs> perfect. But this point is like, uh, the Naveta, Naveta Inverso, which is basically where I inverse all of the tobaccos under the original Naveta blend. And then the last one, um, that we just launched is the Lunar. And that's something that we are so beyond excited. Been on back order for a little while on it because there was so much interest around the blend. There was so much interest around the story and people wanting to uh, convey that story. We even did like 2,500 uh, boxes that were made to look like the actual capsule that ended up landing on the moon. So mm. that was that was very special to us. Um, so we really had a lot of fun with that. That's awesome. And then two, we'll take a step back and talk a little bit about the core line. I'm assuming this was uh, your initial releases that you guys have done. Yeah, man, we did the uh, we did the Fratello Classico, which is the one that sports. Uh, a similar uh, label to my background right here with the Fratello. Uh, in that one, we ended up doing a um, an initial production, which was you know kind of crazy to do now in retrospect. But I ended up producing like thirty thousand cigars, hmm. and all yeah, of a sudden, this uh, you know r- right off the bat, I don't have like the the Steve Saka's name or the Meligio's name. I, I you know like all these different people that have like such a wealth of history and knowledge. And an involvement in the industry, right? Like some of these guys have been around for 10, 15, 20, 25 years, right? So I didn't have any of that. So for me it was knocking on doors saying, Hey guys, do you like to, uh, carry, uh, Fratello cigars? And they were like, who? Who? Are you? who? And who the hell are you? And I'm like, Oh, well, you know, I work, you know, my name is Omar. I work at NASA. And it's like, wait, what? You work at NASA? <laughs> NASA's and then, and then I will lose all credibility at that point. It's like, this guy has to be either crazy or like, well, you know, no, nobody knows what the hell's going on, but you know there was a there was something about the cigar, about the classico that really called the attention. One of the things that really did propel me to a next level, and uh, I told the, the story to uh, Michael uh, uh, multiple times. Michael Herklotz from mm-hmm. uh, Feriotego Cigars used to be with Nat Sherman. Um, when I went to the trade show in 2013, I had literally a few days with like no sales at all, and I'm th- sitting here, uh, guys, with thirty thousand in cigars right mm-hmm. think about it like at that time i was married and i could see just the uh, icicles from my now ex-wife clearly for a reason <laughs> <sighs> trying to murder me you put everything we had into this business and you sold zero in two days um but we got a big break uh, on the third and fourth day uh of the pca and one of those was you know my own personal like uh uh OCD about not giving up and trying to just like email every single person on the trade show floor and individual emails and say something specific about their company. I mean, I did over 868 emails or so, uh, um, in like less than eight hours or so, just literally typing one by one, not even doing, uh, mail merge and any of that stuff because I need to find something unique about each one so that I can, uh, capture their attention. And so, uh, that third day was, uh, was, was huge for me because a lot of those people that got that email said, wow, this is impressive. This guy knows a little bit about my business and he wants me to invite him myself to the booth at 2207. Like what? Okay. You know, so they gave me a shot. A lot of people came around, but one that was pivotal was, uh, Michael, uh, that at that time was the vice president for Nat Sherman. And, um, I'm not sure if you guys, you know, were familiar with how hard 
an account like that is to land for a small manufacturer, let alone somebody who has never even been part of the industry or haven't, haven't done anything in this business. Uh, no relationships at all. Uh, he smoked a cigar. He turned around and he came back to see me and said, this is great. Can we, we can't curse here. No, you're good. You're good. Yeah, we can curse. Okay. He said, this is fucking amazing. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to send my guy, go ahead and talk to this guy and see how it goes. And came around, gave me a, you know, gave me a, a nice order. And then all of a sudden, once you started going around saying, Hey, you got accounts like not Sherman supporting you. Uh, you know, got accounts like W. Curtis Draper in Washington, DC, old Virginia tobacco, faders tobacco. And at that, at that time, which was one of the oldest tobacco in the U S. Once you start getting that kind of like uh, repertoire, that people start paying attention and say, what the hell is this guy that's landing some of these accounts? And so that was part of, uh, that, that, that all, all that credit belongs to the cigar. So the Fratello Classic is something I am fascinated with and then after that we launched the bianco which is a maduro also part of my core i launched an oro which is one of my top selling brands i have the oro came out of the dominican republic so that really is a, a very you know s- solid representation of what our core line uh truly is yeah i think you're right based on you know some of the other people that we've talked to it seems like it's definitely the, i mean the cigar industry no doubt is cutthroat it's ruthless it's very hard but what happens is it's a slow beginning and then once you get a few of those big uh, accounts, you're able to kind of leverage that to get more and more after that. For sure. hundred percent. And then two, uh, since we're smoking the Arlequin, um, let's talk a little bit about that. I know that's from the, um, your Italian collection. So what uh, exactly is Arlequin and what does that translate to? Yeah. So Arlequin is, uh, um, is a, uh, Italian, uh, uh, Italian opera character, uh, from the 1600s, uh, uh, it's called Arlequino in uh, Italian. And, uh, this, uh, this brand was originated because of, you know, I wanted to kind of reflect some of my own personal interest and, uh, and, and expressions when it came to the Italian collection, right? So, uh, I ended up launching, uh, this cigar that for me, when I grew up, I was a character, again, the Arlequin that was just in place and stuff like that all over the Dominican Republic. And Dominicans just, we just loved it, you know, loved everything about the Arlequin and the multicolor, the dancing and all that stuff. And so, um, I, uh, I ended up working on this brand that I wanted to just be simple. I don't want, I wanted to be fun, simple. I wanted to be able to connect with everyone. Um, I call the Arlequin, uh, and, and, and part of this Italian collection kind of like the, the, the crowd pleasers, uh, for lack of a better word, because they, the, you know, somebody who smokes a mild cigar would love the Arlequin. Somebody who smokes a medium to full body cigar, would love the Arlequin. Somebody who smokes a medium body cigar, obviously will love the Arlequin. So it really is something that you can take to any, to, to a party or any wow. place. And you will never be, you will never have somebody who's just like, Oh my God, this, this is horrible. I mean, there are cigars in my line that I don't recommend people to, uh, to take to parties all the time because people may not necessarily appreciate, uh, some of the complexity, like the Naveta, for example, is one or the Fratello, uh, Fratello Classico is the medium to full body blend. You know what I mean? You, but the Arlequin is just, man, it can be mild, medium, doesn't matter. You like full flavor. You're going to connect with that cigar. No, yeah, I agree. Kind of like I was saying earlier, the, we are generally more medium to full body smokers across the board, but this cigar has such good flavor and it comes off mild in strength, but the flavor, it just keeps you more and more. That's the key. That's what I love when, when people reflect on, on the Fratello Arlequin, especially the Connecticut is that people, people get, Oh, you think it's going to be a Connecticut? It's going to be, you know, mild. It's going to have like certain little flavors or whatever. Nah, man, this is a full flavor. Full balance, you know, cigar, but that necessarily, I don't even pay the, I don't, honestly, I don't even pay attention to the strength of the uh, Arlequin. So when people ask me, hey, what strength do you think it is? I always say medium body. But again, like somebody who's a mild cigar smoker can smoke the Arlequin without a problem. Yeah. But it's definitely more of the medium body. I think too, we've been talking about this recently. A lot of the times, um, the, like the strength or the body is so subjective anyway that, you know, you tell this guy it's a medium body cigar, he might smoke it and think it's super mild. And then the guy next to him might smoke it and think it's more strong and more full body. So 100%. yeah, as long as you're 100%. kind of in the ballpark, then, you know, you can pretty much get away with it. 
Have any of you guys ever had my uh, the Texan? I have a cigar called the Texan, which is a, a cigar, medium to full body, like super full body cigar that I have on my lineup. Have you, any of you guys ever had the Texan? Not the Texan, no. Uh, okay, so the Texan is probably you know one of the strongest cigars that I have on my company. Uh, Seven one eight by fifty eight, um, full body. Man, we put Andujo tobacco in that. We put uh, we brought it in from the Dominican Republic. It's phenomenal. And, um, but it's strong. And so I tell, I, I, I tell all the time, it's like, Hey, you know, like it's definitely subjective, just like you said, cause I've had guys that have literally uh, smoked a cigar that it takes me two and a half hours to smoke, he smoked it in like 45 minutes and tell me that it's a mild cigar. I mean, it's just a smile for him. You know what I mean? Well, what do I know? I'm not smoking it for the guy. You know what I mean? This is the kind of <laughs> yeah, situation yeah. that happens. So. Yeah, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. I'm sure Jared would be that guy too. He's like, yeah. you know, smokes it in half the time, and he's like, "Nah, this is nothing. There's no strength to it." <laughs> I love the flavor, though. I mean, even with like six cups of my coffee I had today, the flavor is still there. It's really good. Yeah. There's a third one. We I gotta had get you the days. Texan. Yeah, this yeah. really full body one. We're gonna get you see what you think. Yeah, man. I'll try that on an empty stomach too. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. To see if to see if it's got some strength. But you agree, uh, Jared? Like they, it has like. The Fratello, like in Connecticut, it's got good, a great flavor balance. It's not, it doesn't, I don't think it actually smokes like any other Connecticut, uh, no, no, the, the not at all. on the market. Yeah. And so I think it's, uh, I think we got something really special. It's brand new too to the company. So, uh, it, it, it still has to make its way out there to, uh, to the consumer base and everything. But I'm telling you right now, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a huge success. And we've been noticing a trend too, because we always say, you know, we're, we're really not Connecticut guys, but there's been a trend recently. Where uh, quite a few brands have been releasing these Connecticut cigars that are gr- have great flavor. They might be like a medium body or something like that, but they're different from your classic uh, Connecticut that you would imagine. Very mild, not a lot of flavor. And I think for a Connecticut to compete in today's market, it's got to be something like this, where it's a lot of flavor. Uh, maybe it's a medium body, so you get a little more like spice to it or something like that. But in order to compete with a Connecticut today, it's got to be something special. It can't just be, you know, like no offense to Ashton. I think the Ashton classic is very mild and very uh, yeah, and flavorless. I but- think, I think that's why, like, I never really liked smoking Connecticut's was because it's so mild, uh, the body and the flavor that it just, I always felt like, like, why am I smoking this? Yeah. Just get you it. Know? Um. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it, it was just like, I I liked Connecticut's in an area where I could, you know, everyone was just smoking to smoke like a wedding. You have 20 minutes yeah, before, yeah. you know, you don't mind just throwing it out. But besides that, it's like, I don't want to sit down and smoke a, like a normal Connecticut. You know, it's just, I'm not going to, I'm not getting anything from it. You yeah. Know? But yeah, I mean. But, story with this one though. No, <laughs> yeah, 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 no, no sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, it's like, I, I, there's. I've been smoking more Connecticut's recently just because brands like Fratello and these other guys that are coming out with unique blends with a Connecticut yeah. wrapper, it, it, it's drawing me towards it more. Yeah, not for sure. And then too, I know we've got some uh, kind of breaking news we can talk about too. You do have a concealed carry line uh, for Fratello cigars and you recently had a very recently a new release from that line. Yeah, man, this is uh this is exciting for us. This is uh. It's a new cigar company uh, called Conceal Carry Cigars, and it's all about, you know, telling the story of a time in our history where, you know, he, just human humans have had to resort to either uh, um, uh, crime, violence, uh, you know, uh, uh, righteousness, uh, rules, regulations. I mean, you name it, right? Um, and uh, what we do every single year is we uh, select about, you know, 60, 75 of our top retailers. And uh, although we started it this year with a, with a, with a particular theme, uh, we call basically every single theme that we have um, in this year in particular is all about prohibition. So we're telling the story of prohibition through one cigar at a time. And, uh, and, and it's been, it's been a lot of fun. I'm not going to lie. It's been a lot of fun to get this incredible product out. We don't disclose what the cigars are. We don't disclose the blends. We don't disclose anything. It's just tell people to just light it up, enjoy uh, a very unique, different blend. Um, anybody who wants, who's interested on this, obviously can go to concealcarrycigars.com uh, and they can look at the list of, uh, the approved retailers that we have there. 
Um, but primarily for us, it's about, you know, uh, t- telling, telling a very, a very fun story, have people gather around, talk about, uh, uh, certain things. And, uh, that's what concealed carry cigars is all about. So we're all about, uh, you know, expressing, uh, you know, some of the sentiments. I don't know if I'm going to get into religion with concealed carry cigars, but, uh, who knows? Maybe we'll get into something, but it depends on how much alcohol we have. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome though. And we do appreciate cigars that can tie in history or some sort of story that you can learn about. I think, um, a lot of great cigars that we have, not only do they taste great and they smoke great, but some of them too have history blended into it somehow. And I think the whole concealed carry theme and the theme you just described is a pretty interesting one too, especially for a majority of people that are cigar smokers. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So you have uh, the speakeasy was this year's and then the two years prior, what were those? So the speakeasy is the latest launch. Uh, and the two other, the first one was obviously the 18th amendment, which was the one that it's kind of started at all. Uh, and then obviously we went from that to the Detroit river. The Detroit river was a lot of fun for us because it's basically, you know, the Detroit river was used as one of the, uh, uh, you know, routes for some of these smugglers to, uh, bring in product from one location to another. And, uh, um, it was, uh, it was heavily policed. There was a lot of crime, a lot of things going on, uh, with the Detroit River. And then after that, now obviously he was telling the story of the speakeasy and, uh, a lot of people obviously know and very familiar with that. But the next three releases that's going to happen, you know, in the next couple of months after that are going to be so much fun because it, 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 it tells, it, it, it kind of like, uh, uh, close us in the whole story of what the prohibition era was. And once we are done with prohibition, we're going to the next subject and the next theme. And, uh, we have some really, really cool stuff planned for 2025. Man, looking forward to it. Yeah. Sure. And then two, um, I noticed that Fratello beer exists as well. Tell us about that. Okay. Oh, nice. There you go. yeah. Gotta again. try a little beverage with my boys, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, it's exciting because we've had, we've had the, uh, it's the first time we've ever done, uh, anybody's ever done a cigar where you're literally explaining and, uh, pairing the cigar. I'm fascinated by pairings. I have a, a YouTube channel called, I'm not sure if you guys have ever seen it, but it's called Imperfect Pairings. Uh, it's been around for over six years now, but it's all about, you know, trying different things, right? And so, because I'm fascinated with pairings, I ended up putting with the Fratello, this is a Dominican Pilsner. It's a little bit of a higher ABV. It's got 4.5 ABV, but the, uh, what we do is we pair it with a specific cigar. So mm. in this case, we ended up pairing the cigar with a Fratello Classico de Arlequin. And then we give stories about what, it, what are some of the things that you should be able to pick up across the blend and nice. across the beer itself. So for us, it's exciting. This is the, uh, the, the Dominican Pilsner that we have. And now also we launched a uh, hazy IPA. There we go. It's nice. a gorgeous IPA guys. If you like something that is, that's got, you know, doesn't have that level of, uh, of, of sourness and it's just, this is hard to pair an IPA with a cigar guys, because as you, you know, some of you, some of you guys drink uh, some beer here and there, especially on the, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is going to be one of those. That's not, that's not going to have that, you know, uh, uh, too much of the bitterness that can easily take away a lot of the elements that you find on a cigar. That's pretty cool, actually. That's, That's really cool, <laughs> I've never, yeah. Yeah, I've never, never seen, seen that, that. I never thought of that before. Having the cigar Here's right the there in the can. Pairing. No, that's that's yeah, smart. That's cool. that's, that's pretty, pretty cool. cool. Huh? So where are you selling these? So we're selling them in the Northern Virginia, uh, D.C. and Maryland market. Uh, primarily. So, uh, these are the guys that are basically, we have a great distributor in Maryland and DC that's, uh, taking care of, uh, our distribution there. But, you know, when it comes to beer guys, you, you probably already know this. It's, uh, it's, uh, it, going through state lines requires you to have a distributor, requires mm. you to have licenses, it requires you to have so many things, uh, that when I initially launched the beer, I was thinking I'm going to take over the world with this. And all of a sudden, then I was like, <laughs> screeching all, where are you guys based out of? Just that I know. Uh, Orlando. Orlando. So I went to see a buddy of mine out in, uh, um, uh, Mississippi and he owns, he's one of like what they call like the five families of the Miller Lite, hmm. um, uh, group. And so 
uh, he has a beautiful cigar shop down there in Biloxi. Great, great, beautiful spot. He's got more money than God. Great dude. Paul is a fantastic guy. But he, when I went to see him, I said, like, hey, man, let's, let's see if we can do something together about the beer. Or carry my cigars. This is what we have here. And he was like, bro, this is a, this is a, you have a rude awakening in front of you. So he kind of like leveled me out and talked to me about some of the things that I should be expecting. And so the trajectory when it comes to beer is, uh, is incredibly different just because of regulation. One state does this, another state does that, does that. So, um, yeah, no, it was, uh, it was an interesting, but now we're focusing in the DMV, which probably sells more beer, you know, in this area alone than the entire cigar industry as a whole. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a new endeavor. It's something that, that I'm, uh, I'm looking to, to shine more light upon this industry of c- the cigar industry that I love so much. Yeah. And too, I think pairing beer with cigars isn't as talked about as like, you know, whiskey. Or even right. rum or tequila or anything like that. So it's, it's kind of a, a underrated pairing or a pairing that's not talked about too much. Um, exactly. But too, yeah, I mean, and we've learned that, um, you know, while there are a lot of regulations in the cigar industry, it doesn't compare to when it comes to alcohol in a lot of cases. No, absolutely not. Just curious, are those flavors on the side of the can what you should be tasting while you're drinking or before when you first light up the cigar? So we actually divide it up in three. So we divide it up in three stages. So in the case of the hazy, we tell you here's some of the things that you should expect out of the beer. Here's some of the things that you should expect out of the cigar. Oh, okay. nice. So okay. Very three stages. And then the same thing in the second stage and then the last stage as well. So the classico is a very unique blend for us too, because the way we blended the classico is we put the tobacco in different stages so that it can significantly change the, the, the flavors on you as we go. And so we break out the tobacco, we put some stronger parts in the front, milder parts in the middle, so it can kind of like, you know, oscillate a little bit and it ended up working out pretty nicely. So No, that's pretty awesome. I that again, unheard of, at least for us. Uh very unique to having the cigar. Like the basically the pairing guide on there is pretty cool. Yeah, man. How are you guys doing after uh uh that uh Elena. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean Florida's fine. Like I yeah. mean for the most part. I think like the the, the West, handle. Yeah, the panhandle right. got it the worst. The West yeah. Coast a little bit. But no, the rest of Florida is good. I mean, we we were in the Carolinas actually this past weekend because we tried to go to a wedding. Well, some of us made it, some of us didn't. But that was a that was a shit show, man. That was crazy up there. Yeah, I was in uh North Carolina during that hurricane. And uh it was it was definitely fun. No cell phone service and no power for like three days. Uh, the no power was still the cell phone service came back like after three days, but they still didn't have power by the time I left. That's rough. Yeah, all the airports are shut what'd down. What you do? What you do for those three days? We we had a wedding. We got ready for the <laughs> wedding. We you know we got I me. Mean, we got they, lucky. The wedding had a, had obviously power. Obviously, you know. Yeah, yeah. The, venue, the, yeah. the morning of uh, the wedding, the venue got power. So yeah, so Zach. Since Zach was in the wedding, he went um, before the hurricane to get there just in case something happened. Mark and I, um, we left Friday basically right after the hurricane had passed through. Yeah, such and a shit show. No, yeah. I mean, the, the trees were blocking the road. We had to literally cut through a bunch of trees. We cut through about like 20 trees probably. Not exaggerating. We had a guy with a chainsaw, uh, ended up being two guys, helping us cut each tree one at a time as we went through like one of the highways in South Carolina. And then it, you know, by 5.30 p.m., we're like, okay, we got four hours left in the drive. If it gets dark and we have these issues again, we're screwed. So we had to find a hotel and stay the night out there. So we didn't make it to the wedding, unfortunately, but at least, you know, one of us was there. There you go. Representation. That's it. You got to have one cigar guy there, you know. (laughs) I brought the cigars, too. Good. Hopefully, you got some Fratellos in there too. <laughs> we got actually, him. Just, I did. That's a no. I, that's did, a no. Yeah. I swear to God, I did. Yeah. I was going to say, I thought we got him after, but no, you no, uh, you gave me like one or two before. Oh, man. Yeah. I'm smart. I'm, I'm a smart guy. <laughs> smart. Oh, man. But yeah, so I think uh, we're going to wrap it up here soon. Is there um, any sneak peeks you want to share about your, uh, what you're working on in the near future? Yeah, we got something pretty cool coming up. It's uh, 
Uh, we haven't announced it yet, but it's, uh, but you know, why the hell, man? I'm drinking beer and enjoying mm-hmm. myself. We got that one called the DMV. It's, uh, we're, we're, we're bringing this back. Uh, it's a small limited production. Only 200 boxes were made. Um, and we produced this gorgeous, gorgeous cigars. It's basically, we call it the Maduro selection because we were selecting, uh, four different types of Maduro. And I did this to pay homage to my, uh, the DC, Maryland and Virginia market, which, you know, I, I, I've been here for 20 years and they were the first ones. Virginia was the first, uh, uh, uh account that allowed me to do, uh, uh, you know, uh, mass distribution. I had DC where I did my first event and Maryland was the first store that I ever, that ever gave me some support. And so I'm, I'm all about, uh, um, you know, figuring out ways to get, uh, to get something really interesting back to our consumers and to our retailers. And so, um, that's coming up in about uh, a week or two. So, okay. Pay attention on that. Cause I'm the first one to hear it. <laughs> hey, awesome. Nice. Breaking news. <laughs> Heard it here first. Nice. Exactly. No, that's awesome. Yeah. A great way to pay homage to, to, you know, where you started in the industry. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, man. It's not easy, bro. I mean, it's like, uh, when you're trying to get out there and trying to like, uh, pound the pavement, a lot of people, oh my God, I do amazing with, uh, with Fuente and we do an incredible job with Oliva and Padron and they're just like, yeah, 165, 35, 40 years each, you know, between the, between this, this almost 200 mm-hmm. years. Yeah. So, uh, it takes, it takes time to build any brand. Um, but one thing that's for sure is, uh, I'm excited that, uh, that, that we are getting so much attention, um, from a lot of our retailers, you know, and a lot of our consumers, obviously, that, uh, that follow us on fratellocigar.com, that follow us on our, on our social media and all that stuff. And it just helps out a lot, man. It goes, it goes a long way. I'm humbled by it every single time I see somebody taking a patient smoking Fratello, man. To me, it's just, it makes my day. So, uh, that, this is, that's the reason, you know, we put so much effort. Um, and, uh, in love and passion into something, uh, as crafty as the cigar industry is. No, absolutely. Yeah. All right, guys. Appreciate you for tuning in to another episode of the cigar guys. Definitely check out for Tello cigars. We highly recommend the, <clears throat> the Arlequin, uh, the Connecticut is definitely one of our favorites right now. But of course, there's, uh, plenty of other cigars from Fratello that you can try. And we're going to definitely be trying as many as we can. And again, thank you, Omar, for joining us this evening. My pleasure. My pleasure. I appreciate you guys for the invite, man. It means a lot. Absolutely. All right, guys. Take care. We'll see you next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Cigar Guys podcast. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all the latest episodes. Looking for short-form content? Check out all our social media accounts in the description below. 